Do you? I I should not hug him. I don't think. No, you should hug. Him. Should I hug? You should clean. Stop ignoring me. Who is it? Tell me it's not Stephanie. I think you need space. <laughs> I don't want anybody getting hurt. Okay, let's do you now. Okay. It's a fucked up world. Hi, I'm Pete, uh, Peter Fredrickson. And I'm Dylan Jones, also known as Dill. We make videos, we make short videos with our friend Jim. Uh, that's it. They're videos. They capture like little views into a codependent world. So how long are you thinking on the top? Pete and Dill tends to be pretty real most of the time. <laughs> Just trust <laughs> it, It's yeah. exaggerated, but it's, uh, it's all right. Right there, right here. It's nothing we're not doing. Yeah. I kind of decided that it would be fun to give Dill kind of like a Frederick Douglass haircut, where it's like kind of a harsh part and short on one side and kind of bigger on the other. And it's kind of turned into the classic Dill. I cut his hair similar to mine a couple times and they, may, they all mock me because they say it's the only haircut I can do, but that's just not true. The classic Dill is also known as the classic Pete. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is different. This is a different haircut. Yeah. Sit down. It's a fun, creative, collaborative thing, like outlet. It's an outlet. The majority of people who watch Pete and Dill are uh, members of our family, like our, well, my mom and your mom. My mom says that she watches <laughs> Pete and Dill. Uh, yeah, we, uh, we've been best friends in second grade. This is a long time. Yep. Yep. What was it, what was our friendship like then, Pete? What was our friendship like in second grade? There was a lot of, like, playground stuff. I feel like I acted like a velociraptor a lot. Probably. We're doing pretty much the same exact things. <laughs> This is the same things that we're doing now, we were doing then. You know, we, we do have some codependent tendencies. Like, I'll, I'll say, hey, Dill, do you want to go to the grocery store some days? And he'll say, eh. And I'll say, okay, I can wait. <laughs> Stop. What? On the surface, it's pretty normal. We're just like two pretty close friends. Two guys. Two guys hanging out. Uh, but, you know, you get a little deeper and it's like, oh. What is it about me, she asks. Do I need a dead body lying in my bed in order to feel good about myself? 
We aren't the people who make things happen. Codependents are the people who consistently and with a great deal of effort and energy try to force things to happen. I don't know. I don't know what else to say. I don't know if people know what Pete and Dill is. Like, they essentially enjoy watching me antagonize you and in turn humiliate myself and you're humiliated because you're stuck with me. Look how happy she is! Ooh, Annie! Those eyes, what is she thinking? My name is Matthew Brown, and currently I live in the apartment that, with Peter and Dylan and David Fredrickson. So the apartment you see Pete and Dill filmed in, I live in that apartment. I hear a couple people bustling up the stairs. Who's here? Pete and Dill and Jim. And what are they going to do? They're going to make an episode of Pete and Dill. Hey. I'm laying down on my bed. I got earplugs in. I'm trying to relax. I'm trying to be serene. You know what I mean? And there's all this chaos and noise and bumping and boom, boom going on in the back in the outside of my room. You know what I mean? And it's good. And I, I, I love them. And I'm trying to support their creativity in any means possible. But, you know, there are some days. <laughs> It's okay. not gonna fit. Well, you know, can, can you just just unplug? Like, I didn't want this. Just unplug. You want it? Can you please just unplug? I didn't just want this. Place. I didn't okay. want this. All right. Okay. Hang on. Damn. Huh? I don't know if Anne likes the new TV. So this is the studio where we're going to be having the party and screening Pete and Dill. My name is Sarah. I'm a producer and studio manager at May's Studio in Chicago. Pete and Dill is a web series by a couple of guys who I'm friends with. They live next door to me and they are Peter and Dylan. Pete and Dill are often connected at the hip, although they do lead kind of different lifestyles. Peter goes to work five days a week, nine to five, and Dylan has like a much more erratic schedule, um, just kind of erratic lifestyle. And all of these little situations that they have in their real lives kind of end up getting pushed through this like prism of Pete and Dill. What do you see? Change jar. You're goddamn right it's change jar. No, uh... Whose change jar do you think this is? A lot of art directors come through here and creative people who work in the ad business who also do, you know, fine art of their own outside of their work. And we wanted to give them an opportunity to show um, that creative side, the non-commercial creative side. I thought that this would be a really good audience for Pete and Dill. You trying to tell me some kind of ghost walked into my room and skimmed a little change off the top of my change jar to go and buy some ghost food? No. Mm. You better give me something a little bit better than that, cause uh... Sure as heck don't believe in any such thing as ghosts. She managed to weasel us into a show there. And we, it, we are, uh, so, so we're gonna, we're gonna show Pete and Dill videos in like a gallery setting. Uh, like coming a couple right of up. slimy weasels. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pizza! 
Fred's cooking some Bergs on the George, and I'm cooking some Zed in the uh, old Kenmore oven. Um, right now we got the Zed on broil. Uh, Pete likes it because it gives the cheese a crispy texture, and I like it because Pete likes it. I feel like I'm pretty sensitive to their day-to-day -day interactions and their day-to-day -day relationships and their relationship in general as friends. Uh, one of the things that I know kind of causes a stir in Pete, not, you know, uh, an intense stir, but just a little stir is when Dylan answers the phone. Whenever Dylan's girlfriend Jackie calls, Dylan uses the same tone of voice and says the exact same thing every single time. And what Dylan says is, you know, goes, just in general. Oh, oh hey, yeah. what's up, Jackie? Oh, oh, hi, Jackie. Yeah, I mean, maybe it sounds like an idiot. Pete's jealous. That's not it at all. <laughs> and those moments, those types of moments, are really what are portrayed in Pete and Dill. Oh, hey, Jackie. <laughs> You're stupid. It's almost like Pete and Dill has created this safe space for both of them to explore these tensions in their relationships. Am I... Am I real? Yes. Am I God? No. Am I a person? Yeah. Am I important? No. Am I Dill? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah! Am I Pete? Chair sure, right. I think if I met Dill, oh man, I meet Dill, Dill meets Dill, Dill meets, Dylan meets Dill. What happens is, that's already, that's what happens in Pete and Dill, is that like, I meet Dill by becoming Dill. I have met You've Dill, met. I've met, met Dill, yeah. <laughs> and I have greeted him by becoming Dill. Just uh, pretty fucked up. If, if <laughs> and see, I don't know. I think, I think Pete, I think Pete and I would get along for a while, and then I'd kind of just want to hang out with other people. <laughs> Pete seems kind of. Like he would a, get pretty bored. Yeah, Pete. yeah. Pete seems br like a pretty boring guy. Sad. Nice. Maybe nice, but like only because he's depressed. Not really nice. Like he, I think there's a lot of violence built up in Pete. There's a lot of violence built up in Peter though, too. Carol Jones. My name's Dave Jones. I'm Dylan's father. I'm Dylan's mother. Dylan was a perfect kid um, from the day he was born. He was the most beautiful baby in the nursery. He was right in the middle. They put him right in the middle because he was the best looking one there. Um, he always wanted to pretend and he would get us into his um, fantasy world. He's always very sensitive. He, he wore his heart on his sleeve. And his feelings were always hurt easily by other children who didn't have the same sensitivity that he had. They were in fourth grade. And Dylan came home from school on the first day of school and said, Mom, I met the best kid. His name's Peter. And he and I are so much alike. And I, I just have a feeling we're going to be really good friends. And I'm really excited. And 
Yeah. So that was the first I ever heard of Peter. Um, and they've been friends ever since. Until they got into high school, Peter was kind of evasive. And um, in fact, I remember one time Dylan telling me that Peter, you know, was hanging out with all these girls. Dylan called Peter or whatever saying, let's get together. And Peter's like, well, I can't because Stephanie's here and Liz is here and this is here. And Who is it? Liz? Lisa? Stephanie? Tell me it's not Stephanie. Mary? At one point I was like, what is with Peter and all these girls? And um, <laughs> later Dylan said something to Peter about it and Peter said, does your mom think I'm gay? <laughs> um, but yeah, um, they, they got closer like into the later years of high school and then after. So I would say now they're closer than they've ever been. I told them actually that maybe they should change their um, sexual orientation <laughs> so that they could be a couple. <laughs> yeah, I did. Because, you know, they do everything, you know, it's like Pete and Dill, Pete and Dill. So it's like, well, too bad you guys aren't gay. You make a perfect couple, you know, but apparently they're not. Hey, Pete? Yeah. It looks really nice. Thanks. my eyes to a kind of this nasty side of Dylan that I never really knew was there you know because he's like really mean to Peter in some of these episodes and um, I never saw him act like that but when I see it in the videos it's very funny you know because it's like wow that kid is you know he's kind of nasty you know it's like he's constantly tormenting Peter and Peter comes off as this passive person at times and I don't see him that way in real life. I don't see Peter Peter as a passive person at all. It brings me a lot of pleasure when I'm in a bad mood and I'm or I need to laugh, I'll watch Pete and Dill. And it always makes me smile every time. Pete and I were out on the playground at recess and we were just like horsing around and I pushed him and he fell over and he scraped his knee. And I felt really bad. I didn't mean to hurt Pete, but he got hurt. And we went to the nurse's office and I thought that I was like, I was like, fuck, like I hurt Pete and I'm going to get in trouble. And like, I didn't mean to do either of those things, right? Like, this cannot be justice. And in steps P Pete at the nurse's office, the nurse goes, what happened? And Pete goes like, I slipped on a rock or something like that. And I look at him and I'm about to go like, like I pushed you. I pushed you, you know, and he just kind of like goes like, like, don't worry about it. That's the vow. This is the and I've vow. And I had that for what three or four years. She doesn't wear her hair that way anymore. It's much longer, but really cute. And it's called The Vow now that she's famous. She was a chopper girl doing traffic on uh -huh. Channel 9. Uh -huh. You need length on the top for all this know, fingering working. work. Oh, and a shaving. David never shaves me, so we'll use the dog shaver. Yeah, sure. Uh, can you kind of scoot this way? Yeah, right there. That's good. Isn't this grand and I don't have to pay for any of it? I'll take it. Let's talk about you, the genius. The genius dropout who landed a magnificent job. The genius. 
I'm going to start Thank with you, lace. Peter. Is it good? I, I think it looks great. Love. Yeah, I think it looks great. I, really I like do. it kind of like this. Should I do the bow? Uh, no, I think you should leave it like this, to be honest. Like, I think this right, is a well, really I'll good look. Well, I'll spray all my shit in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Spray your hey, shit. you'll sweep up. Oh, that's on me? Yeah, sure. Well, do I have time? So, Pete, what's still up to you there? Uh, he's got work. Oh, he broke up with Jackie yesterday. So that happened. They've been they've been dating for years, like two years. Just ended it. Uh, I think that's what's going on with Bill. <laughs> oh, you're the best. You are so fucking talented. Look at my hair. I am so fucking talented. I just wish you'd return to your old painting style. We're Peter's parents. Bjorn doesn't talk a lot, but I make up for it in spades because I do talk more than your average bear. Peter, oh my God, that kid was born brilliant. It's not because I'm his mother. Peter used to want to be an actor. This just came to my mind. Oh my God, all through grammar school, he always had the lead in the school plays. Initially, it was all paleontology. There was, that was it. Dinos, 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 dinos. And of course, Ghostbusters and He-Man, He-Man. Then, at, at, when school plays were starting, he was fearless. He was confident. Confident. They compliment each other unbelievably. One of my favorites is, what, what the hell was Dylan doing? Flashing! No, no! He kept taking pictures. Where, no matter what he was doing, yeah. reading a book, brushing his teeth, and then the next yeah. scene, he's at the sink, washing dishes, and here's Dylan, flash! And I forget what Dylan says, like, surprise! Yeah! Come on! Get out of there. I need to watch Pete and Dill's back to back to back to back and just kill myself. The only best friends better are Peter and David towards one another. In Villa Park, it was a three bedroom and they each had their own room. We moved here, it's a four bedroom. They chose to share a room. How about that one? That's how close Peter and David are. Fred Christ. <laughs> Take him forever. Here, I'm doing this for you. And I'm doing this for you. Peter's been cutting my hair for the past three years. I've loved every single haircut but one. Which Where? one? <laughs> um, you turned me into Sergeant Bilko? No, 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 that wasn't me. That was not me, that was Denny. That was Denny? Yeah, and I mocked you for it. Yeah, I guess. You, you got a perfect score then. Perfect score. You made fun of enough other haircuts I had that I could only get my hair cut by you. Only recently has Dill ever come between Pete and Fred, and that's when Pete and Dill came around. And uh, they started like closing the door, and Jim would come in and say like, Hey, can you be quiet? We're filming Pete and Dill. And it's like, well, Pete and Fred are watching something, so like, what's <laughs> more important right now? You know, I, I still don't remember meeting him. It was more of like, remember hating him as a kid. Thinking like, what an idiot. How did my brother pair up with this guy? He's kind of just been there the whole time. Hey! What's up, y'all? Pete and Dill. Dill.
has only really after a curve it has to go for a curve that's where jealous. Uh, <laughs> actually, Dill's, Dill's ex-girlfriend, every once in a while he'd call her up and he'd be like, hey, we're filming Pete and Dill right now. I can't hang out just yet. And I'm like, did she ever get angry about that? No, no. No, so, but I'm sure there was a hint of jealousy. Uh, my name is Jackie Niekamp, and I know Dylan and Pete through school. Um, I also dated Dylan for two years. Pete and Dylan always took precedent over Dylan and I hanging out. Oh, I think it's recording. Because <laughs> um, he just like, oh, you know, can't do anything on Saturday, gotta shoot Pete and Dill. And that was like a whole day thing, you know? And it's like, he scheduled his life and like relationship too a little bit around it. My first impression of Dylan, I'll say this, is like the most rambunctious person I've ever met. Like whenever he comes over here, he will dress up like a crazy person. But I don't think that that's a bad thing. Like I like that Dylan a lot. And then I like all Dylans, <laughs> all, the, all the personalities. I love the struggle between them. Cause like, I feel like Dylan like annoys Pete to no end, I think a lot of the time. But then Pete does the same to Dylan but in like a totally different way. Do you remember how I got into this? Yeah, hello. Into what? Hair cutting. Well, didn't you just start cutting Jay's hair? No, it was mine. When, when I first like cut my hair long, I was just like, I could do this. And I stood in my kitchen mirror and just, <coughs> smartest thing I've ever done. Ever? Yep. Ever. Nice. Think about how much money I'm saving you. You're saving me a lot of money. My name is Meredith Ketchell, and Pete and I dated for nine months. Pete, as a person, is the only man my father has ever loved, which I think says a lot about Pete. He's very thoughtful, and he's very genuine all of the time, even when it's annoying. He was just so fucking good to me and I realized that I didn't deserve it and that I was kind of an asshole and like I didn't want to I didn't want to be his mom I didn't want him to take care of me so I actually I broke up with him and um oh God. and the next day he got hit by a car it ended terribly but you know what relationship doesn't I guess I mean I can understand them being really really good friends like back in the day but for them to still live together, to me, is totally insane. Like, I would never live with, like, my best friend from, like, middle school. And for them to consistently, like, always be together and then to, like, go to the same college together and then, like, still to convince Pete to move into the city and, like, live together. Pete's my big, strong man. <laughs> Pete and Dill are mean. Pete and Dill, definitely. I think I've seen them kiss on the mouth. My name's Steve Reber, and I know Pete through my partner John, who um, was Pete's teacher at SAIC, and then Pete came and worked with us in the studio. He was a semester behind in school, so it was a kind of a crazy class with a lot of flunkers in it, so he was in my uh, class of flunkers. He told us a lot about his, his family, and... Um, that was always interesting. Yeah, and um, yeah, and Pete was great to have here. Pete was really fond of Meredith, and Meredith, um, I think, genuinely liked Pete a lot. I always got a sense, and I think he always said that, that what he liked about Meredith is that she was difficult. That she was not just a run-of-the-mill, you know, chick from art school. She, she was challenging. He liked that. And I always thought that was interesting in relationship to his mom. And um, <clears throat> as also a difficult character, a difficult woman in his life. Do you think that Dill in the, the videos has a similar challenging role. Huh. Huh, that's interesting, thinking about 
the idea of Dylan as some kind of like surrogate for Pete's mom. <laughs> it's a theory. They keep their relationship pretty safe. There are a lot of things I know for a fact they disagree upon, but they don't address those things. They don't talk about those things. We don't have a whole lot of problems with each other. But when those issues come up, um, I think they're difficult to deal with. Dill tends to be pretty, he, he's, Dill's, Dill is timidly confrontational. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can borrow some sex. Cool. 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 Why? There's not necessarily a whole lot of problem solving in our relationship. I think our fear a lot of the time is, you know, I don't want to hurt Pete. Pete doesn't want to hurt me. In Pete and Dill, we can hurt each other as much as we want. And it doesn't matter. We control because we think we have to. We control because we don't think. We control because controlling is all we can think about. It doesn't matter. We try out very weird and very sometimes bizarre, violent emotions. And we, uh, I don't know why. I think that their relationship in real life is way weirder and way more adorable. Like, they have this pact, uh, not really a pact, but they have a, an anniversary of, like, when they lost their virginity, you know? But, like, they celebrate it together, and they're, like, they're unnervingly close. So, basically, after Pete lost his virginity and caused September 11th, uh, we all knew about it. <laughs> okay, all right. Pete has told this story a million times about him losing this his virginity and thinking that it was because God was punishing him. And so like, I'm, I'm in math class, still blushing. I had no idea what was going on. It's September of fucking 11th. And like, we, we catch the first tower falling. I was just like, <laughs> holy shit, man. Holy fucking shit. God is so pissed. God is so pissed at me. It was like five minutes after that, that I stopped believing in God. <laughs> And then five years later, Dill had sex on the same day. But I didn't even realize it. I, you know, I, you know, kind of just decided to, that it was time. And my girlfriend at the time, she said, you know what day it is, right? And I'm like, no, like Wednesday or whatever. She's like, it's September 10th, the same day that Pete lost his virginity. We've been celebrating ever since. Yeah, it took you a while to tell me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had a, my 10th year anniversary, and Dill had his 5th year anniversary. So, naturally, we threw a party. I think it kind of uh, points to this special connection that Pete and I have. I'm not necessarily 5 years behind everything on Pete or anything like that, but... Definitely not 5 years ahead. The point is... <clears throat> Fuck you. Is that we're connected? <laughs> Do you guys know how Pete and Bill are feeling about the show, Conversion? Hmm. Maybe we need to talk about defense mechanisms. You know? <laughs> you are like really fucking jittery right now, dude. I know. I can't help it. I I uh, I'm actually very excited about the show. I think that. It'll be a fun way to just get out of the house. I think we're gonna try and do a Pete and Dill there? I don't know. I have no idea. Uh, no. Pete's optimistic. Pete's very optimistic. When has he not? Like, when has he not been optimistic about his own art? Mm hmm Dylan, he kind of glazes over whenever it gets talked about. I'm not even sure what it's gonna look like. Like, if it's gonna be a projection or on like a little television screen. Multiple screens. Um, I don't know like who's gonna be there or like what 
the people are interested in who are you know, going to be there? This is just a, it's just a thing. I mean, it's cool. It's cool that it's happening, but it, it is just kind of a thing. They're not talking about their hopes and their dreams and their aspirations for the show and for Pete and Bill. They're just talking about it like this thing that's going to happen. It's going to be funny. This show is going to be about making everyone remember us. Peter. I mean, it's good that you're doing this now because in a couple months we're going to be in Hollywood or something. We'll make it fun. Yeah. My name is Becca Zale, and I know Pete and Dill from middle school. We met in middle school. Okay, Pete and Dill, to people that have never seen it, is... I, see, I don't even know if I would say it's comedy, because then people would be going into it with this expectation that they're going to laugh. And some of them aren't funny. Hey, Dill. Hey, Pete. Usually, Pete always ends up getting the short end of the stick, <laughs> and Dill is inconsiderate and doesn't know that he's even hurting Pete's feelings. Or maybe he does know and he likes it. Your hand. Give me your hand. Here. Uh, uh, call someone! Call someone. Uh. It's pretty much about their everyday life, but like, magnified. Has Pete ever given you a haircut? This is actually a haircut by Pete, yeah. <laughs> Pete loves cutting people's hair. He doesn't always want to cut it or doesn't always let on that he wants to cut people's hair. Um, sometimes people will say, hey Pete, can you cut my hair? And he'll be like, ugh, like, you want me to cut your hair? Like, this is like, you're asking, you're asking too much of me with, with no return, you know? <laughs> And, but then, with the same person at a different time maybe, maybe that person will get their hair cut by somebody else and Pete will be like, what the fuck? Why didn't you let me cut your hair? Like, my, my hair cutting abilities aren't good enough for you? You haven't cut my hair in a while, Pete. It's been a while, because you were going to flow. I think it gives Pete a little bit of a thrill to like, have some sort of control or ownership over this part of people's heads. <laughs> If I offer it once, then that's like an open invitation. And then people just like have me cut their hair. And that's fine. Yeah, I'm still cutting my own hair. I still cut my own hair. And it's not because I trust myself more than other people. It's that nobody fucking offers. My name's Ian. I know Pete and Dill. We grew up together. If you didn't know who Dylan was as a person, to see his caricature, and his character and who he is, especially against Peter, it's the funniest fucking thing in the entire world. I don't know how it happened that way because Dylan is a sweet, genuine guy, but to do the complete opposite of that is really funny. And Peter plays it off as like this total schlub who just takes the abuse. But in the dynamic of our group, I think the, the funniest thing is that like, if you were to look at Peter is more the leader, I guess, and, and, and Dylan takes this alpha male role against that. And it's just, it, that dynamic is really funny. We kind of played me up as a victim, and we we made him an antagonist. Work with me here. If we wouldn't have gone to the beach, this wouldn't have happened. And I think it was not at all like a, a conscious decision. It just happened. I think that I have a lot of uh, hesitations about Pete and Dill, and I think a lot of it has to do with uh, the Dill character. He's talked with us before about how he's worried that the videos are framing him as like a, a as like a an asshole. And we've met people because of these videos, and I feel like they almost expect it out of him. Like they don't know that it's not him. And that's a fear that, that I, I understand it entirely. Like. Dill should be concerned about that because he's not that guy. Dylan is not Dill from Pete and Dill. Maybe people just recognize that this is an act, but it's difficult for me to maybe convince myself that
took a while. Whoops. Think I can make it? Yeah! Cops. Good old Dwarf Explorer. Yeah, I all I have is a twenty or a card. What do you want to do? I do you want the twenty? No. Yes. No. It's up to you. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna do that. Thanks, bro. Mm -hmm. I I'm thinking if you put like ten bucks in and then we fill up again out of Chicago. I don't want to make more stops than we have to. We're going to save so much money, Bill, I'm telling you. Like, like a dollar a gallon. <laughs> ah, fine, whatever, do what you want. <laughs> Fucking idiot, man. Going to Indiana to hang out with little David? Because I... D Dill thinks that I've not met him, but I think I have. I don't know. I don't know for sure. Uh, maybe I've just seen little David's picture in Dylan's wallet enough times. He, uh, really likes beating Dill. <laughs> Can you change the voice on this? I don't know. Is there a Pierce Brosnan option? No. I, I was in Plainfield once when I was dating Meredith. Uh -huh. And, uh... In .8 miles, keep left. I swear this fucking thing is interrupting <laughs> me every single time I open my goddamn mouth. Uh, so... <laughs> It's just like my mother. <laughs> Where are we meeting them? Uh, well, apparently they live off the grid, so we're, <laughs> we're meeting them at Pizza Palace, um, which is my grandma's pizza restaurant. <laughs> oh man, Pizza Palace. That's where your mom gets all the Italian beef. Yeah. Damn it! <laughs> I never said it was gonna be open. I don't know when it opens. Let's go to me! You know what, I think maybe you were at Dylan's one show in Chicago and I think we met very briefly Could be. There. Abso uh, yes, absolutely. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Um, I was just snagging some snacks and stuff. All right. I don't know if you guys are hungry or not, but uh, Grandpa left a couple beers at the house if you want to Nice, that those. sounds good. <laughs> yeah. So it's right, right, and then you're right there. We're real close. Okay. Thank you. Hey David, how's it going? Good. Make yourself at home. All right, All right, thanks. So you did not bring your clippers this time? I did not time? bring my clippers Okay, because I, after seeing the video, I really <laughs> wanted uh, one of those Pete and Dill haircuts. <laughs> so I let it grow out some more and then you can get it. Let it grow out. Here. I'll give you a classic Real Dill. Wild. Now, now, what did you guys well, say on your video? Top. It was like, sort of like... Frederick like, Douglass? Yeah. Frederick Douglass, oh my god. <laughs> yeah, I remember studying about him in history. Are these your awards up here, David? I think it's for reading a hundred books. Oh, wow. Nice. I don't know if I've read a hundred books. I definitely have not <laughs> read a hundred books. 
each year. That's 100 books each year? Yeah. So you've read 300 books? A lot more than that. My name is David, and I know Pete and Dill because Dylan is my cousin. There's two guys. One's named Dill, and one's named Pete. It's really funny, and not normal. Probably Pete is more of the good guy. Most of the videos, a normal person wouldn't put up. I got a new TV. Looks like a piece of shit. It's better than this piece of shit. In Pete and Dill, I would say that Peter is subject to Dylan. And the perfect example of that is the episode where I think it's called Pete's Bad Day or Pete's Big Day, where Dylan is jumping on the bed and he's being very aggressive. Pete reaches this boiling point where he says, That's it! Dylan, get out! No! Get out! No. Get, get out! No! 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 Dylan begins this process of pleading with Peter and trying to appease him and like trying to make up because Dylan's aware and sensitive to the fact that he has hurt Peter's feelings. If Pete and Dill were on a playground, you know, Dill would be the one picking on Pete. Dill! What the fuck? What's wrong? Never seen a half Windsor before? Pete is pissed, and but he doesn't lose. Pete doesn't lose in that situation because he just like walks away, and that's not what Dylan wanted, you know. I don't know, and I feel like that's kind of their relationship. They always try to like push each other to the limit, but then they like stop just short always. They feel very heartfelt and um, telling. There's a sense that it's tr the truth, but. At the same time, you get a sense that they're constructing something. So you don't know what's true and what's not, and how extreme it is, and how... Yeah, so it's really interesting that way. You do realize that you're gonna have to cut your hair, right? The episode Dill Joins the Marines, he gets this idea in his head that he's gonna go and he's gonna do something, and it's pretty extreme. And Dill does this all the time. I mean, I'm the guy that's uh, saying, oh, oh, we should, we should kill each other in this episode, or I should hang myself, or something, just to, because that, that makes the most sense. Hey! Hey. Sorry. It's all right. The process of making Pete and Dill has brought me, um, has made me ask a lot of questions about my patterns of behavior. <laughs> what are you, what are we doing? Stabbing Pete. Fuck, Dill, come on. I, I was thinking about that today, actually, about Pete and Dill being presented in a public place and, and how I felt about that. Um, <sighs> I think what I'm trying to say with that uh, is that I don't know. <laughs> Dylan oftentimes has feelings of, you know, um, feelings of doubt. People may react in a very critical way to Pete and Dill that people might not like it. Uh, but Peter, on the other hand, he is going to be there. He's going to be front and center loving in it, you know, he's gonna be exuberant, he's just gonna be happy people are seeing Pete and Dill in general. I think the videos will be fine. The videos are gonna speak for themselves. They're gonna be on like a big screen or something, and we're just gonna be there. And we're gonna be being Pete and Dill. We're gonna be probably drinking champagne or something. Adjusting our bow ties the whole time. <laughs> Pete is 
very enthusiastic about everything that happens with Pete and Dill. Pete just like, he loves it. Pete will say from his room, hey, the new Pete and Dill is out and it'll be the final cut and we'll all go into Pete's room, sit down on his bed and watch it together. Peter, his reaction verges on arousal. Dill's along for the ride. Sometimes I sacrifice my reservations in order to uh, keep things rolling with Pete, <laughs> you know? It's given me a lot of existential issues um, and has complicated the way that I think about my psychology. And has complicated the way that I think about Pete's psychology and Pete's existential issues, if he has any. Um, <laughs> which, you know, he does. <laughs> Like everything that Pete, you know, everything we do in Pete and Dill, I love. I love it. I get to act, which is not something that I do much. I sort of act at work. Dill took a bunch of pictures of me uh, with his camera, and he gave them to me. <laughs> I really, I don't know what to do with them because I'm glad he gave me pictures, but like, it's like depressed Peter, and then there's like really happy Peter sitting in a park somewhere. And I think this is on the same day. I don't know for sure, but I'm wearing the same shirt. But I'm wearing that shirt right now too. So, whoops. <laughs> This is uh, Dill's Crazy Mushroom Barley Soup. All my recipes are Dill's Crazy. Dill's Crazy Rice, Dill's Crazy Pasta, Dill's Crazy Pizza, you name it. Whatever I make. You can ask Pete. I love you. Mm. I love you. Mm. I love you. Mm. Say hi. Mm. Say hi. Mm. Hello. Clippers, this is what I use on everybody. Hey Fred? Yeah. You have a sec? What? Do you have a sec? Do I what? Do you have a second? Uh, I will soon, but not at the moment. What are you doing? Making dinner. Well, can you just, I, I mean, like, two seconds. I mean, eggs are cooking. Every time. It's for the show, the Pete and Dill show. It's called Converge. I'm going to write that on all of them, actually. We've got a stack. Hi, Dill. It's a piece of free... So, bro, had to borrow a pair of your underwear because Pete told me that if I got fitted for a suit, that I would have to take my pants off. <laughs> Wait, you don't own the underwear? I have one pair, but it's dirty. Are you serious? You don't you own only underwear? Have one pair of underwear. Yeah. What pair did you take of mine? Uh, boxer briefs. What color? Blue Hanes. Okay, is it like solid blue or are there lines? Solid blue. And is it like an elastic strap? Yeah. Uh, and, <laughs> and how's getting fitted? These ones. 
Oh, those. I didn't have to take oh. them off at all. Those were Mitch's from like four years oh, ago. Thank God. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I kind of. Double recycle. I feel bad fishing through Fred's underwear right now. Yeah, what'd that feel like? <laughs> it felt dirty. Well, they're renting. They're them. renting tuxedos they're renting from tuxedos. Men's Warehouse. I don't know. They're they're going out and they're gonna get like a one night, like a prom, like they a just prom got rental. They just sized up last week. Yeah, You're like you could wear a suit and be mm. taken seriously, but the tuxedo is like a layer. It protects them. It says we are characters, even though we're in this real space. We're just like characters from this webisode mm. series. So, like, it's one more protective layer to keep them from actual interaction. So they don't have to be themselves, they could be Pete and Dill, the web. Wow, dude, I think you're right. Because a suit's perfectly respectable. The entity, Pete and Dill, the show, the whole thing is a way for them to look at themselves. Do we get paid for this? No. If you were to see me and Pete in our everyday interactions um, around the apartment, there will be times where Pete will aggravate me, say. 99% of the time, I won't say anything. I will sort of like hold back and maybe at times be passive aggressive with Pete, but Pete and Dill allows me to be hyper aggressive and to sort of like um, experience that role that I don't feel comfortable acting when I'm just with Pete on a regular, everyday level. If anything, I am I am definitely pushing Dill around more than he's pushing me around. <laughs> uh, so, you know, it, without, without really thinking about it, there was a bit of a role reversal. This is an on-camera revelation. Uh, we we definitely did like uh, there there was there's some sort of role reversal like dill is dill can be such a timid person in social situations in dealing with people he doesn't want to hurt anyone's feelings and pete in the videos is very much that way and then dill in the videos of course is this like dominating force and in I guess in uh, in real life, I'm kind of that way. Like I'm, I'm the one that's gonna lead a conversation, and I'm the one that's gonna be outgoing, and I'm, uh, I'll, shit, I'm the dill. I'm the dill. <laughs> this is I I I'm 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 being very honest. This is not something that I've ever really thought about. That's cool. I guess we're taking the things that we like about each other and using them for ourselves. Picturing it bigger. Yeah. But, uh, hey, at least, uh, yeah, it's me. You don't have to watch it right now. You can use the washroom. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, but I will definitely after I Is this a line? No. Pete and Dill. We were talking about Pete and Dill. No, not a line. I was watching me. No, like, really quick. You did? I think it's your line. Thank you. <laughs> Enjoy the bathroom. I can't wait. Enjoy the bathroom. Pete, I was looking I in the mirror. Wait. 
There have been a lot of joyful aspects of Pete and Dill to me, a lot of laughter, but there have also been a lot of painful aspects to Pete and Dill, the things that it's made me think about, the things that it's made me deal with or try to understand about me, about Pete, about each other. And despite my reservations about it, brought me to a place where I have a richer understanding of my own dysfunction. He knows all of the the best and the worst things about me. And I know all of the the best and the worst things about him. I don't I don't know that anybody else knows me like Dill knows me. And I don't know if anybody will. I don't know if people get us. I don't know if they understand uh, like the way that we function together, the way that we relate to each other, or the way that we interact. I mean, we must look so stupid to so many people. But we think we are hilarious. And I'm not talking about Pete and Dill right now. I'm talking about Pete and Dill. Like, the, the people that we are. obvious. I think it's pretty clear to anybody and everybody else that we're Pete and Dill. And it, that's it. There's these uh, curators who think that we're like performers or something, <laughs> and they want us to like uh, perform at events, <laughs> uh, and they asked us for a description, and we just told them that we're best friends. So yeah, they wanted a one to two sentence description. So 
Dill wrote down Pete and Dill are best friends, and that was it, and they loved it. <laughs> so we're thinking, say, a party doesn't have enough best friends, they can hire us. Smile. No teeth. 